I've been working uh, 20 years on on film, on TV. I am a social communicator. I study that and don't study, I didn't study uh, film. But uh, I start to do it because they, I wish to work on film. That's what I'm my cinematographer. My first film, my future film, the first time that I did like DP was All Your Dead Ones, in which one I won uh, the prize in Best Cinematography in the World in Sundance in uh, 2011. And then I had made uh, seven uh, films, like a photographer, and I have uh, maybe 10 films, like a cameraman, and before I start to do my 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 career in like cinematography I think that, and right now I'm working on TV and TV series in my country because I think that in my country I have to do TV if I want to do films because we almost don't have money to make movies you know that we say we, we have a, a phrase that we said I have to sell my soul to the devil when I do TV to to, to make films <laughs> Yeah, that's it, I think so. Thank you. Uh, my request is uh, Slobodan Karadu to speak about her movie, her experience in EP as well. Uh, hello, I'm uh, really very happy to be here in Goa. Uh, my two is my debut uh, feature. Uh, I have studied film school in Prague, which is a very famous and I suppose very big, very good film school. But after the school, I kind of got carried away with life and got kids and so on. And then after a while, I was uh, completely uh, determined that I have to make a feature. And uh, I set myself a challenge of making a very intimate feature about uh, two main characters and the story of uh, 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 love affair. It is not actually a love affair, but it is a very close relationship between a heterosexual woman and a homosexual man. That is where the producer's line of the love story of 21st century comes from. <laughs> but it is basically, it is a film about, um, about human closeness and about the borders of human relationships, because the two characters have uh, reached to have a very um, inspiring relationship, challenging their um, their habits, their life habits, and the way they, they look at the relationship, at the, their relationships by that time. And um, uh, we had a screening yesterday evening, and I'm very pleased that, uh, in spite of big cultural <laughs> differences. Uh, the film got very good uh, reception from the public here and after the film I had Q&A's and I was uh, very very happy that there were some people, of course not all the public because it is a very uh, subtle and intimate movie but uh, there were some people who really understood the film in such a depth that they uh, asked me about the shots that I haven't uh, shot and I wanted to and so I was, I'm very happy about the receivement my film and go out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Radun. Uh, sorry to run to your turn now to address the media. You can have your opening remarks. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. See our film called Meg Mollar, and uh, this is my first uh, feature film. So I'm very happy to be here with my first film. And uh, I started in FTI, Film and Television Institute of India, long back. And uh, now it's very nice to be here with our film. So our film, Mingmalar, is uh, based on 71 liberation war of Bangladesh. And uh, you know, like Indians know very well. So it is, uh, it is out of this mainstream history, like uh, how people people suffer in the war, the uh, family story. It is a story of a college teacher who was not really involved with 71 war, but somehow he caught into this and at the end he claimed himself as a freedom fighter. So it is a very personal story of war, how people are suffering. So 
that's why you call it uh, like people wars so it is 3 million people give their precious life in the war and a lot of women was uh, you know what war uh, could do so it is uh, uh, it is a film where i want to see the people as hero of the uh, country who really sacrificed their life in the war thank you very much thank you mr anjan uh you walter sir you can have your opening remarks Hello, hello everybody. Um, my my film uh, called Baba June, Baba June in uh, in Farsi. It's um, my dear father, but you can also call your son if you want to give him respect. Uh, you tell uh, Bab Baba June. Uh, I'm Israeli, but my parents came from Iran to Israel, so. Um, because of that my film is talking about uh, Iranian family that live in Israel uh, and speak Farsi um, the boy in the film is um, is me when I was young I uh, used to live in that village uh, just was a Iranian community every village is different community there is Indian uh, village and Morocco village and uh, Iran village because when people came around the world to Israel they prefer to be among themselves uh, and it stay until uh, until today um, and this is my uh, first feature film um, uh, telling my story and um, now we uh, we won the best Israeli film of the year and we won five uh, prizes of cinematography and uh, casting and design and music um, and I'm very happy to be here uh, what I like in, uh, in Goa in India like to see how much you respect uh, cinema um, to see outside all the this poster of the film and I've been in in several festivals and really I appreciate it uh, when I see that and I'm more than happy to be here Thank you, Wilshed. Uh, the floor is open for questions from media. Uh, hello. Yeah, I'm beginning with uh, Ivan, sir, and Diego, so I can speak about this. Uh, you spoke about uh, not having the money, I mean, money driving the fact uh, to produce films. So, is this true for the entire industry or is it a certain kind of film that you want to make and there's no money? There are other kind of films that have money. Your question is addressed to who? You uh, answer it because even uh, Diego just spoke about okay. the same thing. Да, парите основния Бенел в мексиканския период, когато няма никаква работа, прескача до Холивуд за да озвучава филми като саунд директор. И най-после среща един мексикански продуцент. На нискобюджетни филми, който му предлага три филма. Два комерциални за продуцента и един артистичен за Бенел. На Бенел артистичният филм е пален провал. А един от двата е Лос Олдивадос, 
от което тръгва новата биография на Бенео, след като Джон Хюстън го препоръчва в Кан. И стана това име, което пред всички се прекланяме. Така че не съм сигурен дали само парите са проблема. My country, even is is not easy to vote. <laughs> it's, it's because we only have one one prize per year for only two production that government help us. You know, this is the only way that I can say. If you try to do it commercial, <laughs> it's not easy. And even all the prizes almost don't sponsor commercial films. If you understand, uh, this is for me is 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 not easy. This is what I'm saying when I start to speak that I, we have to sell my soul to the devil. Devil is a t -t TV, t TV to take savings, and then I can spend time doing films, yes, you know, but this is a, it's not an easy, in my country it's, it's really hard. Right now we have been stopped for more than 20 years without any movie, and right now we have the, the government is helping us, but right now it's only for two production per year. And some people like me, uh, we have a lot of friends and people that want to do movies, and we are, uh, sometimes we have to sponsor uh, with our job, uh, the the movies, you know. Right now, there's a new industry that's uh, uh, almost a lot of um, uh, North American films are going to work in Colombia because it's cheaper to shoot there and things like that. And right now, we are growing a little bit. I think that we are. I'm I'm, I'm from Colombia. I did uh, the film uh, Magallanes. I did in on in Peru. Okay, but I live in, it's, it's my experience in, in, in Colombia. That, that is almost the same in Peru. They only have one prize for two, for two films per year. You know, that's what I mean. And I said it's not easy in both commercial. Maybe sometimes it's, it's easier, some people. But we are still growing, you know, production and doing movies, you know. That's it, I think so, I hope. Uh, any other questions? It's a slow Bodonka Radu and spoke about your feeling very nicely and just listen, I was just listening. So what philosophy led you to take that feeling? I mean there are different cultures, different people thinking about different patterns and for India it is, I believe it is incomprehensible. Uh, it, it, it is, it should be, but what is your inner thinking pattern in that feeling? Uh, thank you for your question. I don't really believe that there is a philosophy behind it. There was, there was this um, trying the borders, trying to be subversive, trying to think openly about things, trying to go with the actors to some kind of, to some kind of a journey because um, I try to be very, uh, to watch their relationship growing from the very near uh, perspective and uh, to be communi communicative at the, at the same time. That was my big challenge. But the, uh, I wrote the script, that is important. I wrote the script together with a uh, very famous uh, writer. Uh, she won lots of uh, prizes, not only in Czech Republic, but in Germany as well. And uh, it was her first uh, feature as well. We wrote the script together. And uh, this collaboration was very good for the movie, I think, because she's the one with the philosophy. I'm the director. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? Uh, I have a question uh, to uh, Bilsha. Uh, what made you uh, shift from uh, documentaries to feature films? 
is this part of, or does that tell that uh, documentary is, as a genre, is still struggling? Uh, no. In the last five years, more than five years, it became a change in the, in the documentary, in the media, because uh, all the reality came into the TV and uh, all this YouTube channel and the mm -hmm. internet. So people start to be aware of camera, aware of how they're gonna look at the final, aware of a lot of things. Uh, they, they, knowing, they know what is drama, they know that <coughs> everything is, you've seen many things that's, that's the reality took the emotion and it became something uh, not so special. Um, so this re reality that I saw in the documentary became less and less reality from my point of view. So uh, I moved to do a feature film because in feature film I control everything. I can tell exactly the story that I want to tell. So then I tell the story that the father and son conflict, but wha what I had in, uh, in my village, in my life, uh, and it's um, international conflict, so um, it was um, it was easy for me to to choose exactly the way I want to tell the story, exactly the way I want people to feel after they're going to see the, the film. You want to create a reality of your own where you have control over. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, Mr. Anjan, uh, I, I I I understand that your movie is an adaptation. And uh, it has been often said that uh, when you adapt from a book, and as in the case of translation, there are chances of uh, losing uh, the meaning. <coughs> How difficult was it? Uh, was the process of adaptation? Uh, yeah, it is always difficult because uh, uh, you know the writer writes in his own way. He has got a medium, different medium, literature. And when I first uh, uh, made the first draft, then I forget about the story itself. So then it become my film, you know. And a lot of things is changed, and I have changed a lot of things in the story. But uh, the main course of the story is um, the the narrative. But I have changed how I put it in cinema, because cinema and uh, literature is a very two different medium. So when you work. It is better if you like, uh, uh, you know, change the story and make your own story and tell your own story. So I think in that way it is very different, but I, I had to change a lot of things from the story. Your subject is very sensitive about the uh, politically also. Yeah. So did you make some compromise uh, for filming the story? Uh, uh, no, no compromise because it is an independent country and now the uh, in power is a political party who were led the liberation war, Omelik. So uh, that way it was not difficult to, you know, I did not face any difficulties and it is a very personal story of war. So there is no, nothing very controversial like, uh, you know, it is a suffering of people and a story of a family. So that way I did not, you know. Uh, but creating the, the 71 itself, then Pakistani army and all this rain, this my story is high rain, three days. So those were the other difficulties, but otherwise censorship and other, I did not feel. Diego, uh you know, movies are often termed as uh, the director's own craft or the director's own art. You know, uh, when it when it uh, becomes a huge hit, the, do you think that the director often takes the whole credit? And in that way, what is the role of uh, the cinematographer, the director of photography? And what equation do you have? Did you have with your director in mental illness? Uh, uh, okay, when is uh, the first film? The director, I think I. I am uh, like his right hand, I think so, sometimes. In, in the case of Marayanes, the, the director, he is an actor, he is a famous actor in, in Peru, and that was his first movie.
but and he believed in me a lot okay and uh, he preferred to work with the with the actors you know and he told me I need your hand in, in uh, where I have to put my camera and things like that but I think that Salvador did a really really great job he studied a lot he studied more than five years how to do uh, his movie you know and I think that I maybe I'm <laughs> I was really agree with him in all a, a lot of decisions, you know. And the other thing that he chose a really great actors, really, really important actors and and famous actors. But for 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 him, it doesn't matter if he was famous or not. I think that the, he did a really great job. I can say that Salvador, and I can say that thanks to him because he invited me to his to his country because he is from Peru. And I think that it was a really good, good combination of four things. And I only say, okay, give me, let me put the camera right here because it's, the light is better and the things like that, you know. And he let me to choose uh, some, some location for the way that the sun came in and things like that because it's a low budget uh, film, and we did it almost with uh, natural light, with natural light. And you know, and I, I had to choose uh, if this scene I had to shoot it on uh, on the morning or in the afternoon because I need the sun, you know, things like that. And I am in the equatorial line, you know, the uh, Peru, and I have to think all the time where the sun is, you know. And we have to think in how is the weather and things like that because the, in the tropic the weather change all the time. And in Peru, uh, there is a in Lima exactly. They have one, one huge problem, never rains. They have more than 35 years without a hard rain. But there's only one time in this in summer because it was really cloudy. And he prefers a little bit with a little bit sun sometimes. That's, we did it in between uh, January and March. Uh, any questions? If there are no more questions, uh, shall we uh, conclude this press conference? Thank you for being with us. Here. Thank you. Thank yeah, you and so for the media friends, if you want to, take, if you would like to have one-to-one -one interview with these uh, filmmakers, please have it in the opposite hall. Here. Thank you.